Good day and welcome back to our custom chart series in Tableau. Today we are talking about waffles. No, not the kind you eat, but the kind you build in Tableau. Now let's take a closer look at how these look like. All right, so as you can see, um, here we've got three of them, three examples. Obvious resemblance to a waffle, um, which I'm sure you've had in your life before. Um, and you can see these examples specifically gives you the percentage of complete of a specific metric. So this is a nice way to visually and quickly give um, stakeholders like executives a quick view on the percentage complete of certain metrics or um, could also be used to express um, a portion of sales, for instance, from um, different regions and so forth. As you can see, this chart does not give you a great view on um, the exact accuracy of your metric. It does give a good impression at a quick glance to see what you are trying to portray. Now as for the data we'll be using, we are using gaming information, video games to be specific, um, and we're looking at the top video game sales. Um, this is as at October 2016, and it was obtained via Kaggle. Um, so shout out to the guys at Kaggle for scraping the website called vgcharts.com. This is where it actually was obtained from. And as you can see, it gives us a ranking of the different video games with the different platform it's on, the year of release as a genre, who published it, as well as more importantly, the sales numbers. Now, these are number of units sold. So as you can see, uh, we've got, and this has, was in millions. Um, and you, as you can see, this is expressed per um, region. So we've got North America, Europe, Japan, other regions and then the global sales. We will be focusing on the sales numbers within the regions, expressing each of these specific regions as a percentage of the global sales figure. And as always, we'll start by joining to our data file. So we can start up a fresh instance of Tableau and joining to the text file. By the way, this file is available on the Super Data Science website. Right, let's navigate to the correct place, waffle, and the file is called vgsales.csv. Right, as you can see, Tableau is clever enough to um, identify the data types themselves correctly, um, but we'll just confirm by just scrolling through and making 100% sure nothing strange has popped up. With that done, we can go to our first sheet, yet before we actually start pulling in information, we need to do some prep work. We will, as a matter of fact, first build the skeleton of this waffle chart before we use some data blending um, to map our data onto the waffle. So what you can do is you can go to Excel. In my case, I've got OpenOffice here, um, but in essence, it doesn't matter which one you use as long as it's an Excel file and you get it loaded up into Tableau. Um, what we'll do is create the waffle chart um, for the computer to understand it. Now, we'll do that by starting off creating a row column and then a column column and then also a let's rather call this percentage column okay how we'll do this is we will tell tableau specifically how to map the data that we are um, and the formulas we'll be creating in tableau to color these specific blocks but let's first tell it which blocks needs to be created so if you remember, and we'll just go back into our chart over here, we fill it up from the left-hand side to the right-hand side and from bottom to top. And as you can see, 45 would have the first four rows um, colored in and then the first five blocks as well. Just had to count them quickly to make sure. <laughs> um, but in essence, you, that's how we populate them. Um, and let's go and create it in Excel by saying, on the first row, we'll obviously start with the first row and the first column, which is that block over there. We want to give it a value of one because that is 1% and it's actually right out 1%. All right. Next, we do, we stay in the first row and we say column two and we give it 2% because at that point, let me just try 2% again. At that point, we already have 2% filled. Um, and it continues uh, up until the end of this row, which would be 10%. And obviously doing 10 rows would give, get you up to 100%. So it is as straightforward as just dragging this down into 10, because we have to fill the first 10 columns, making sure as well 
that our rows are still row one and we can also uh, let me just undo that we can also use the percentage just drag that down to 10 percent actually let's go all the way let's go up to 100 percent because that would be our target our aim at the end of the day all right 100 percent um, the next one we want to obviously color at 11% as you go back to this chart would be the second row but the first column. So we just type second row, first column um, and the next one second row, second column. And as you can see this pattern just repeats itself. So what I'll do, I will just copy and paste this. Um, yep, that's fine. I'll just copy and paste this down to make sure that we, we have the correct values in here. And you only have to do this once. All right, and if you use waffle charts for something else other than these um, percentages up to 100, you will obviously have to come and change your, your chart a little bit around here. So we can just drag the two down there, and let's just start three and copy and paste that down up until there. Yeah, this is quite a tedious process, and there are probably easier ways to, to use formulas to do this. I find it um, quicker just to copy and paste this, as this is a once off exercise in any case. All right, halfway there, number five. Do, let's do number six. Yeah, if this is boring, feel free to fast forward a little bit on the, on the clip. I, I wouldn't take it personally. <laughs> All right, let's just scroll down. Almost there. Number eight. Um, number nine. And lastly, oh, I made a mistake there, sorry. Number nine. And lastly, number 10. Okay, so basically, what we then have is, um, and it, basically, what we have now is our waffle chart in the sense that the computer can understand. All right, so we save this um, and we can, yeah, you can obviously save it to, to Excel, um, make sure it's saved to Excel so Tableau can read it, and we can call it um, waffle template. I'm not going to save this now because I've already created one for us, but you can click save and be able to join to it in the actual Tableau reading. All right, so let's go back to Tableau and let's actually go back to our data source. Now, we will not be joining these two. As I mentioned, we'll be using a blend without any data to blend on. So a little bit of magic over there, which will become a bit clearer. But for now, let's just actually get the waffle chart template read in. So we'll go to again, go and connect as I mentioned Excel and there is our waffle template all right as you can see row 1 down to row 10 and column 1 to 10 with the percentages just as we've done I actually renamed mine to 10 by 10 because um, as, as, as I mentioned you can also have this more granular or um, have it shaped differently uh, but for this instance we'll be using a 10 by 10 all right and we can go into sheet 1 to show the template, it's quite easy. We can just drag column to column and row to row. Uh, we must remember just as well as also to go to untick the aggregate measures because we want to show each value in individually. And as you can see, it's already taking shape to look like a, a waffle. Um, let's also then also just to show you, um, if we put the percentage into label, you can see, um, as we mentioned, it runs off from a 1%, 0 0.01 through 100, through to 100%. Let's just remove that for now. We obviously want this to be a waffle chart, so we can just change this back to squares and let's also just increase the size a little bit. And there is our waffle. As you remember per our data, we have different regions. Just a quick look again. Um, and we will start, to, well, we do, we'll do these charts one by one for each of the regions and we'll start off with North America, the North America sales and we'll express that as a percentage of the total sales firstly. All right, let's close that down. Um, let's go into there. You can already see the orange indicates that it's blending data. However, there's no link on there, um, but more about that a little, bit, a little bit later. All right, let's create a calculated field firstly and call this North America sales portion for instance and we will just take the sum of the North American North America sales and we will take that as a fraction of the sum of the global sales. There we go, as straightforward as that. And then we create another calculated field using that North America sales portion, but back on the waffle template. All right. 
and we again create a calculated field and here we can just call it North America color because this specific uh, calculated field we will use to color our waffle chart with the um, percentage that we're actually going to portray to the viewer. And how we do this is we'll use the North America sales portion um, field we just created and we'll say where that is greater than or equal to the sum because it has to be aggregated of percentage. Now percentage as you remember was the percentage we assigned in the waffle chart and th what this in essence gives us is a number which if we drag this and uh, you'll see it making sense now if we I drag this onto color immediately you can notice that it colors it in a one specific color the orange when it's true and then blue when it's false and as I mentioned this is specifically for North America sales so in this would have been if we just count here quickly it's 10 20 30 40 49 percent of all the total sales would have been from North America we obviously need to validate that but that's what it's saying at the moment and as you can see we are doing a blend we're using two different data sources without a specific field on there um, by just using it within a formula next what we'll do is we'll just give it some proper color so how I like to do this um, let's just go into color is to take something striking striking so let's use for true which we want to color as blue and then I use Seattle grays to get it um, for the false part sorry I get Seattle grays into the the very lightest gray that there is and then it makes it much more striking to the user to see what um, what you're trying to to give through this image we tidy this up even further by just hiding the header lines over here oh, sorry the headers and then next is the little grid lines that you can see at the back there as well so we'll just click on format go into our borders apologies I mean our lines over there and for the whole sheet take off the grid lines and you can see they disappear and now that looks much better we can make this visual even a bit more striking by adding in some text of the actual percentage onto the chart um, as we saw in our example and we'll just need to incorporate that value into our measures over or into our um, mark shelf here we will take the North America sales portion and just drop that into detail nothing changes to the chart but now we can actually use it within the chart um, as a text we'll right click somewhere in the middle top over here I think that's a good place to show it as we're not expecting 100% um, it might go up to 100% but for this instance I don't think we're expecting that um, and we will just go annotate mark all right you can see it already populated with a whole bunch of information we only really interested in the North America sales portion over there so let's remove the rest as well as the the heading over there or the title rather and we can also make this a bit bigger make it stand out let's make it 24 and let's use the same color as we had for the blocks and let's make it blue and even bold all right as you can see we've already got it here now as a as a percentage but it's not displaying properly with a percentage sign so we can just format that let's go right click format and let's sorry uh, on the field itself right click format and select aggregated North America sales portion and just change it to percentage and we will just make it with one decimal so although we're not showing in the graphs one decimal at least the user will be able to know whether it's closer to 49 or closer to 50 percent all right let's just change it in the paint as well sorry uh, there we go percentage there we are 49.2 percent now we can do some further formatting with that we can remove this line over there uh, I don't think that's necessary and we can just make the box a bit smaller and at the same time also remove the shading because at the moment you can see there's a bit of shading if we make if we just click that and take off the shading then we have our text written uh, let me just try and move this quickly text written text written out like that there we go I think this would look even better if we increase the size a bit more so it just change that to a 36 even and obviously we have to just adjust the size of the box to to make it fit there we are easy as pie or easy as waffle I should say <laughs> now let's name this chart let's call this North America for short um, and we in essence have to do this exact same steps three more times 
for the other regions as we had. So let's, I'm not going to go and explain each one individually again. What we can do is just go and create the calculated fields as we had needed them. So next we do the EU sales portion. Oh, there we go, sales portion. And we had the sum of, let's now we use EU sales divided by the sum of the global sales. All right. I'll just copy and paste that for, for the next one. So that was the EU sales. Um, let's just check our calculation is valid, yes. Let's do this once more for the Japanese sales. So let's call the sale, Japanese sales portion. And we'll just paste that and go and change this to the Japanese sales, all right. And lastly, we'll do one more for the actual other regions. So let's just call it other. Um, why did we have this other sales portion? Uh, I did my bad. And we'll just paste this and also change it to other. Uh, where is it now? Other sales. There we go. <laughs> it was right there. Okay. And then we can hit apply. And okay. In addition to these measures, we also have to remember to go back to our waffle chart template and also create the actual color bar. I'm just going to. Uh, not the color bar, the actual color um, measure. So I'm just going to go and edit and copy and paste that. It would be easier than to retype it every time. And again, we create three more metrics, three three more measures, apologies. And we will call this one EU color. I'll just paste that and make that change. Yeah, that's fine. We'll do the same for Japan color. And there we go, Japanese sales portion. And oh, there was a little mistake. Let's just see what I did there. Okay, copying pasting is not always the quickest solution, it seems. Um, there we go. And then the other sales or the other color in this instance. And we'll paste that and just change this also to other sales portion. There we go. Now we've got each of these colors. Let's duplicate this chart. It might be easier than to rebuild it every time. I'll just again duplicate it four, well, three times to have four charts. Let's just name them immediately, not to get confused. EU, Japan, and other. Okay, let's start off with EU. So we take the EU color and replace the one we already have, the North America color. There you go, you can see the chart changed immediately. Um, and we obviously need to also just change the detail level. So let's go into the detail because we, as you see, when I hovered, it actually shows the North America sales portion and we don't want to show that. We actually want to show the, the EU sales portion, which will drop onto there. There we go. Yeah, it's showing better. Um, now it's 27%. Let's again, before we forget, go and change the format of this. Um, it's already on there on the pane. We want to change it to a percentage with one decimal. So it's a bit of a painstaking process because we have to do this now four times. But um, in the end, you'll be happy. You'll see it looks great. Okay, <clears throat> changing the colors. Excuse me. So again, our true, we want to make something striking. Let's use in this instance, and well, let's, let's stick with orange. And we can also change this to gray. Let's change it to the same gray as we did earlier. Now for this one, what I think we can do a little bit different um, is also to change the shape. So we don't have to use squares. We can also use other kinds of shapes. And as we are looking at different regions, we might as well use different shapes. So let's try something else. Let's change the, um, the chart type to shape. Um, immediately changes to circles. I think something that is filled would look a little bit better. Yeah, there we go. Let's use filled circles. That looks good. Let's see between the other others. Yeah, the, the difference is immediately visible. As the rest of the charts is just duplication, I will leave you to it to complete these and catch you at the end. As you can see, I've completed mine all with different shapes and different colors. And it's very straightforward now to see what the different sales ratio is of each of the regions. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for some more on the custom chart series and some further data science exciting information. Until next time.